Well, it's good to know that Netflix can make some uh, pretty generic romantic comedies. Hello there, everybody. I'm Anaji, and this is FMV Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about the new romantic comedy, Resort to Love, starring Christina Milian. So basic plot synopsis is that Christina Milian plays this uh, singer who, after a pretty disastrous event that was supposed to have her career take off, um, she ends up becoming like a singer for a resort in some tropical paradise. I'm still trying to figure out if they shot this in Hawaii or not. And basically she's singing at this resort and she's even going to be singing for weddings. And lo and behold, one of the weddings she has to sing for is for her uh, ex fiance who is now getting married and a whole bunch of drama and romantic shenanigans and stuff ensue. So that's basic plot synopsis for this. First of all, I want to say uh, Christina Milian. I remember watching her in the movie uh, Love Don't Cost a Thing when I was a young teenager, and she basically looks the same. This woman has not aged, which was kept blowing my mind because I have I have definitely aged a little bit. But actually, I would say one of the things that surprised me was that she's actually a pretty solid actress here. There's scenes where she has to be emotional. Um, she pulls those off. She can. She's actually pretty funny. I mean, I don't think the script is really helping her, but she's actually kind of funny. And there's parts of the movie where, I mean, clearly they knew she was a singer in real life because they have several segments in this film uh, where she's singing. And to be honest, for this film, those are probably the best moments of this film is when she is singing. Um, I will have to say, though, some of her fits definitely scream uh, New York City. Uh, she's wearing Timbaland boots in a tropical paradise. I, I, I noticed that really quickly because uh, where I'm from, uh, you don't really see people wearing stuff like that because it is too hot. You can't wear stuff like that. Um, and overall, I would say the, the cast is pretty fun here. I mean, there's very they have Jay Farrow here, who actually is a pretty solid actor himself. I mean, there were a couple moments where, because I've seen him do his impression work, some of his like hand gestures kind of remind me of some of his impressions, but he's doing a pretty good job here. But to be honest, none of this cast really, the writing is not really here to give them much to do. And yeah, I mean, the, the writing here is it's pretty plain and it's pretty simple. Um, there is a subplot here with the, with the main character and her ex having still kind of like leftover romantic tension that once that part of the movie started kicking in, I was not really feeling it, to be honest. I just didn't, it just kind of, not to say that it's not possible for these feelings to come up. It's just the the speed and the nature at which it's happening. Just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't really work for me. But one of the things I will have to mention here is there is a serious breaking of the bro code here in terms of going after a girl or a partner that one of your friends has already been with. Major bro code breaking here. And what's even worse here is that not only the breaking of the bro code, the people who are breaking the bro code, one of them is literally the brother of the other character. So that's even worse in my eyes, to be honest. And I, I thought that was an odd thing. But before I get into what I would say is maybe the most interesting thing I can think to talk about this film, uh, for this film, I would say, hey, if you're digging this review, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. But anyway, um, I, I will say that one of the things I did find interesting and kind of refreshing is that even though this is a film starring majority, uh, majority black characters, the issue of race is not brought up in this film. I mean, don't get me wrong, in real life with black people, for the most part, issues of race are always going to come up. As black people, we are very trained to read between the lines to see if race is going to play a factor in it because it you know, it could be life or death for us, but this movie doesn't really bring it up here. And even though I am bagging on this movie saying it's a generic romantic comedy, which it is, I would say there was a strange thing happening in my mind where black folks don't tend to get generic love movies quite like this. I mean, I, there was a time where I worked at a movie theater and I would say around the months of like February to April, you would get movies like this, and sometimes even in June time, because it's like summertime, especially if the movie had a sort of summer theme, and you would have a lot of movies like that, and uh, for the most part, a lot of those movies were, they're white, I mean, nothing wrong with that, but there's just really white, like, generic romantic comedies, so some of them star Sandra Bullock, some of them star Ryan Reynolds, some of them star Vince Vaughn, but you've seen these kind of movies before, and it was different to see people of color do a movie like this, it doesn't mean the movie was better in my eyes or anything like that, but it was like sometimes when I think people talk about film or how do we know we're making progress on something, it's it's the fact of like the way a lot of white entertainment has where not all of it is gold, right? Like there's not every movie is like a Martin Scorsese film. There's a lot of generic movies that star white cast 
when people of color are hitting that point too, where not everything has to be a super important, the whole race is betting on you to succeed or else the whole race fails kind of thing, where some of them can just kind of be generic comedies or not great movies. That is a sign towards some kind of progress to a certain extent. And this movie in my eye was kind of an odd thing of, yeah, that's kind of interesting that we're getting that for black folks, even if it was on something like Netflix. But hey, it got made and Netflix is a huge platform, so it doesn't hurt. So ultimately, I would say Resort to Love that it is a very generic romantic comedy. Um, it does have little light moments with the cast and little funny things. And Christina Milian is actually a pretty solid lead actress, but ultimately it cannot overcome just how by the numbers it is. Um, it has nothing interesting in terms of cinematography. Uh, its jokes aren't even really particularly funny. A lot of the circumstances are pretty lazily written. But I will say it was interesting seeing folks of color in a generic romantic comedy like this where the issue of race was not central to the movie. So with that, I'm going to give Resort to Love a 6 out of 10. So hey, if you've seen this movie on Netflix, let me know what you think about it and leave your comment down below. And if you leave a comment, I'll make sure to comment back. So until then, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.